As a facet of the incredibly famous automobile company Mercedes-Benz, Maybach is known for creating some of the most luxurious cars on the planet. But before Maybach was known as Mercedes Maybach, its original creators were actually simple carpenters from Germany with a dream. Wilhelm Maybach was born in Germany on February 9, 1846. His father was a carpenter, and although they weren't wealthy, his parents did provide a decent life for their four children until their untimely deaths. After Wilhelm's mother passed shortly after his father in 1859, his relatives petitioned for a local institution to house and care for the 13-year-old boy, a decision that would change his life forever. The director of the institution, Gustav Werner, realized young Wilhelm's technical skills and enrolled him in the local engineering school. Maybach was on track for a degree in industrial design and was also taking additional physics and mathematics classes at Rutlingen's public high school. It was quite clear to all those who met him that Maybach was well on his way to being an extremely talented designer. And when he was only 19 years old, he was already working on stationary engines as a qualified designer. He even became the manager, Gottlieb Daimler's main assistant, and worked as his right-hand man until Daimler passed away in 1900. From 1865 to 1880, Maybach learned a great deal about designing and creating heavy locomotives, as well as pumps, lumber machinery, metalworking, and new and improved engines. He moved around Germany with Daimler and eventually made his way to chief designer in 1872 at a workshop in Cologne. At the time, it was the world's largest stationary gas engine production plant and it seemed that Maybach was already leading the industry with his dedication and skill set. And when Nikolaus Otto patented the Otto cycle engine in 1876, both Daimler and Maybach were a part of his team. For the next four years, Maybach continued to work to improve the four-cycle engine until Daimler and Otto stopped working together due to creative differences. And as Maybach was loyal to his mentor, he moved on with Daimler. And in 1885, the two patented their first independent gas-powered engine. And shortly after, they finally placed one of their engines in a vehicle for the first time. There is some debate as to who actually invented the automobile, although many argue that Carl Benz invented the modern automobile in 1886, Daimler and Maybach are accredited with inventing the first gasoline-powered four-wheeled, four-stroke engine known as the Kamstadt Daimler in the very same year. Both creations were essentially happening side by side in Germany. Some say that it was actually the dream team of Daimler and Maybach that designed and created the first modern motor vehicle as it was the gasoline engine that would go on to change the world of transportation. Their success as a team was undeniable, and they decided to start their own business, Daimler Motorin Gesellschaft. The facility was built famously on Ludwig Route 67, as it was not technically allowed in the town center. The plant covered almost 3,000 square meters and employed 23 employees, and the two set forth with very distinct roles. Daimler was the day-to-day -day operations manager and Maybach was the designer. During the next few years, they started creating several of their automobiles, known as the Daimler Motorized Carriage. The car itself was not yet luxurious. Instead, it focused on practicality, durability, and reliability. It was an internal combustible carriage, had less than one horsepower, and only went up to 20 miles per hour. But it was still extremely important not only in the development of the motor vehicle, but also as a popular option among the masses at the time. However, they couldn't sell enough of the Daimler motorized carriages to stay in business. And although the two had created something that would eventually change the world as we know it, they needed more financing. Daimler Motoring Gesellschaft, or DMG as it was commonly known, reached out to investors and found two, Max von Duttenhofer and William Lorenz. They decided to take the company public and Daimler and Maybach sold their mini patents. In 1890, the company was officially re-established with a large German investment banking company and many saw it as a deal with the devil. The next 10 years were extremely challenging for the dynamic duo as they no longer worked just for themselves. And while with this increase in finances, they started selling their automobiles around the world from Russia to the United States. 
However, the automobile business was still not considered financially successful, and many doubted whether they would make enough money to stay viable. In 1900, Daimler passed away. And while Daimler and Maybach worked side by side for almost 40 years, and the young Maybach learned a great deal from his mentor and friend, it was really after his death that Maybach began to create the cars that he would be remembered for. The same year that Daimler died, Maybach created his first ever racing car. Essentially, Emil Jelinek, a famous Austrian race car driver, had noted Maybach's work and promised to buy 36 cars from him if he could produce the perfect racing motor vehicle. When the car was completed in 1900, it was named the Mercedes 35 horsepower after Emil's daughter, Mercedes Jelinek. It then debuted at the Nice Racing Week in March 1901 and made quite a big splash. While all the other automobiles that had been created by Daimler, Maybach, and Benz were essentially motorized stagecoaches, many considered this the first real car. It had a powerful petrol engine, two braking systems available by hand or foot control, steering axles that were designed to minimize shocks for the driver, and with four gears and reverse, the car was extremely impressive. In addition to being successful on the racetrack, it became popular among Europe's elite and was modified for the masses. Production grew exponentially in the next few years, and DMG was expanding its factories, employing more workers, and finally, experiencing great financial success. In 1902, the company officially registered its cars under the name Mercedes, but while Maybach had started the company and made it the success it was, the board actually demoted him in 1907. Feeling disrespected and frustrated, Maybach decided to leave the company behind and once again strike out on his own. It's important to understand that while Maybach invented and created the Mercedes, DMG kept the name and design and was often called the Daimler Mercedes, leaving Maybach's name completely out of it. Maybach was considered by many to be the king of design when it came to all motorized vehicles, and although he was passionate about cars, he decided to work on something a little different in 1908, the airship. At this time, he met up with an old acquaintance, Ferdinand von Zeppelin, who had created the famous Zeppelin airship during the turn of the century. Zeppelin, although an extremely talented engineer, wanted to employ Maybach to improve the engine on his current model, the LZ-1. But unfortunately, Maybach had to deal with issues trying to remove himself from DMG and could not go into business right away with Zeppelin. Therefore, his son, Carl Maybach, took over the contract and started working on the new airplane engine until Wilhelm could join him. From 1909 to 1919, the father-son duo had their own company in which they created engines for Zeppelin as well as other airship companies. However, in 1919, the Treaty of Versailles, after the First World War, stated that no airships could be built in Germany, and therefore, the Maybachs returned to their first love, the automobile. Wilhelm and Carl went back to making petrol engines for cars, and while at first they were solely focused on the engines, they eventually made their way back to designing and producing cars. The Maybach W3 was considered especially impressive for the first time as it had a six-cylinder engine, four-wheel brakes, a new transmission system, and a maximum speed of 65 miles per hour. Wilhelm Maybach continued to work on creating the newest and most exciting engines for his cars, airships, motorboats, and trains until the end of his life on December 29, 1929. At 83 years old, this incredibly intelligent and hardworking engineer had seen the world of transportation change in more ways than we could imagine. And more than that, he personally made a lot of it happen. Luckily for the transportation industry, he had passed down his amazing skill set to his son Carl, who continued working under the Maybach name to make huge strides in engine design and creation. Carl worked through the Second World War, providing engines for German tanks and planes. But as car sales were at an all-time low, the company was never able to return to its former glory of creating beautiful and well-made race cars. Therefore, in 1960, when Carl passed away, the company was sold. Ironically, Daimler-Benz, the company that Wilhelm created and then left, bought Maybach. Daimler-Benz started using the Maybach factories, designers, and manufacturers to create Mercedes cars once again. 
And because they were so good at what they did, the vehicles were known for being perfect and almost exclusively handmade. Over the next five decades and into the 21st century, Maybach, as a subsidiary of Daimler-Benz, had its fair share of ups and downs. Sales became essentially non-existent in 2007, and the Maybach line was shut down in 2013. However, only one year later, Daimler-Benz decided to reintroduce Maybach cars and released the Mercedes Maybach S600 in 2015. And today, they have created the S580 and S680, which are sedans that are stretched versions of the Mercedes-Benz S-Class. Even though Maybachs are not the most common luxury car on the road today, they are still considered one of the most impressive cars available on the market. While the company has continued to create perfect and durable engines, just as Wilhelm Maybach would have wanted, they also now ensure that the cars are grandiose, magnificent, and made for those who not only care about cars, but also have money to spend. And if you buy or even ride in a Mercedes Maybach, you can know that you are essentially riding in the newest version of one of the first automobiles ever made. Hungry for another fascinating business story? Click on the following video to hear the crazy story about the duck farmer who invented Red Bull.